<laughs> well, once I got to work, I, I uh, shared it to my Facebook and then had several friends tell me. He was taking photos of the 9-11 memorial across the Hudson River. Some people think it's an unusual cloud formation. All right, we're going to try this one more time. The skies over France have unleashed a fury unlike any seen in recent memory. Torrential rains, fierce winds, and unprecedented flooding have turned the city of light into a scene of chaos and devastation. Amidst this chaos, there have been reports of a sighting, or should we call it a descent, from the skies above Paris. As the waters rose and swept through Paris, many were left wondering, is this more than just a natural disaster? Could this be a sign from above? A divine message echoing the ancient prophecies of the Bible? In this episode, we will explore the possibility that these catastrophic floods are not merely random events, but significant indicators of a higher power at work. Let's dive deep into the heart of the storm that has engulfed Paris, examine the aftermath, and seek to understand the broader implications of such a powerful natural event. Make sure to smash that thumbs up button, leave your thoughts in the comments below, and share this video with your friends. Now let's get started. Paris, known worldwide as the City of Love and the City of Light, is one of the most influential cities in the world. With its rich history, iconic landmarks, and vibrant culture, Paris has long been a symbol of human achievement and resilience. However, the recent storm has brought the city to its knees, causing widespread damage and disruption. The storm hit with terrifying force, bringing fierce winds and torrential rain that battered the city and its inhabitants. What caused this devastating storm? Where did it come from? And most importantly, is there a deeper spiritual meaning behind these events? In today's video, we will explore these questions in detail, drawing from meteorological data, historical accounts, and biblical prophecies to provide a comprehensive analysis of the situation. The torrential rains that recently pummeled Paris came after an intense heat wave, leading to unprecedented flooding. In just one hour, the city received an entire month's worth of precipitation, overwhelming the drainage systems and causing severe flooding in many areas. Public transport came to a standstill as metro stations and bus routes were submerged. One journalist described the surreal experience of water spilling through bus doors and rising to the passengers' feet, capturing the fear and confusion that gripped the city. The storm's impact didn't end with the rain. Winds reaching speeds of up to 104 km h were recorded at the Eiffel Tower's meteorological station. The powerful gusts uprooted trees, damaged buildings, and caused widespread power outages. The Seine River, already swollen from the downpour, rose by 35 centimeters, threatening to overflow its banks and inundate nearby neighborhoods. The Paris Fire Service issued urgent warnings, advising residents to stay indoors and take precautions against the dangerous conditions outside. As we witness the scale of destruction caused by these relentless storms, one cannot help but wonder, is this a sign from God? Are these floods a manifestation of divine wrath, a warning of greater tribulations to come? To find answers, we turn to the Bible, where stories of great floods and storms often signify moments of divine intervention and judgment. We will delve deeper into the historical and cultural significance of Paris, setting the stage for our exploration of the potential spiritual implications of these recent events. Paris, a city renowned for its beauty and historical significance, found itself at the mercy of a ferocious storm that brought the bustling metropolis to a halt. The storm struck with such intensity that it caused widespread panic and destruction. Residents and tourists alike were caught off guard by the ferocity of the weather, as torrential rains and fierce winds swept through the city. The downpour was relentless. In just one hour, Paris experienced the equivalent of an entire month's worth of rainfall. This overwhelming volume of water quickly inundated the city's infrastructure. Streets turned into rivers, and cars were left stranded in deep waters. Public transportation came to a grinding halt as metro stations flooded, leaving commuters trapped and in search of alternative routes home. Eyewitnesses recounted their harrowing experiences. One journalist, caught on a bus in southern Paris, described how water began to seep through the bus doors, rising swiftly until it reached the passengers' feet. Panic ensued as people realized the severity of the situation. 
struggling to maintain calm amidst the chaos. Videos and images shared on social media captured the terrifying moments, showing the extent of the flooding and the helplessness of those affected. The storm's fury was not limited to rain. The Eiffel Tower's meteorological station recorded wind speeds of up to 104 km h. These gale force winds caused further havoc, uprooting trees and tearing down power lines. Buildings, both old and new, suffered damage as roofs were ripped off and windows shattered. The power outages that followed plunged parts of the city into darkness, adding to the sense of dread. The Seine River, which flows through the heart of Paris, swelled to dangerous levels. The heavy rains caused the river to rise by 35 centimeters, putting immense pressure on its banks. Authorities closely monitored the situation, fearing that the river might overflow and flood adjacent areas. Precautionary measures were taken to protect critical infrastructure and residential zones, but the threat remained ominous. Amidst the fierce storm, numerous eyewitnesses from different parts of France have reported sightings of divine beings in the skies. These reports have coincided with a series of devastating floods that have submerged cities, destroyed homes, and taken lives. Videos and photographs of these mysterious apparitions have gone viral, adding fuel to the already burning questions about the nature of these events. One of the most frequently reported phenomena involves mysterious lights and shapes appearing in the night sky. These lights range from bright, fast-moving objects to slow, pulsating orbs that hover for extended periods. For example, in June, residents of Paris were astonished to see a series of bright lights moving in a synchronized pattern across the sky. The lights were visible for several minutes before disappearing abruptly, leaving witnesses in shock and awe. This has led some to believe that these are not mere coincidences, but deliberate signs meant to convey a message. The cross in Paris, for example, appeared on the eve of a major Christian holiday, leading many to interpret it as a divine sign of protection and hope. One of the most famous biblical passages related to sky signs is found in the book of Revelation. It speaks of a great sign appearing in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of twelve stars on her head. Such descriptions have fueled speculation and interpretation for centuries, leading many to believe that modern-day sky phenomena could be fulfilling these ancient prophecies. The Bible's depiction of Jesus' second coming is one of the most profound and anticipated events in Christian eschatology. This event is described with vivid imagery and prophetic declarations that have been the subject of theological study and speculation for centuries. The anticipation of Jesus' return is rooted in various New Testament scriptures. One of the most explicit references is found in the book of Acts, where the angels tell the apostles, This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Acts 1.11 This passage sets the expectation that Jesus will return visibly and bodily, descending from the heavens. Another critical scripture is Matthew 24.30.31, where Jesus himself describes his return. Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. This highlights the dramatic and undeniable nature of Jesus' second coming, marked by cosmic signs and the gathering of believers. The Apostle Paul also speaks extensively about the second coming in his letters. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 16-17, he provides a detailed description. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven, with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. This is significant for its emphasis on the resurrection of the dead and the transformation of the living who will meet Jesus in the air. The book of Revelation offers the most apocalyptic vision of Jesus' return. Revelation 19, 11 and 16 depicts Jesus as a warrior king. I saw heaven standing open and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire and on his head are many crowns. 
He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. This portrayal emphasizes Jesus' authority and the ultimate victory over evil. In addition to these detailed descriptions, the Bible contains numerous prophecies regarding the signs that will precede the Second Coming. One of the most comprehensive sources is Jesus' Olivet Discourse, recorded in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. In these passages, Jesus outlines various signs, including worldwide conflicts, famines, earthquakes, and the persecution of believers. He warns that these events are the beginning of birth pains, Matthew 24, 8, indicating that they are precursors to the end times. Another significant prophecy is found in Daniel 7, 13 to 14, where the prophet Daniel sees a vision of one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. This figure is given authority, glory, and sovereign power, and all nations worship him. This vision aligns with the New Testament descriptions of Jesus' return and underscores the universal significance of the second coming. As we consider how current events may align with these prophecies, it is essential to approach the topic with both discernment and humility. Many events throughout history have been interpreted as signs of the end times, yet Jesus cautioned against setting specific dates or being overly fixated on particular signs. In Matthew 24, 36, he states, but about that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. However, observing the signs of the times is a biblical mandate. Jesus encouraged his followers to stay alert and be prepared. In Matthew 24, 42, 44, he says, Therefore keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. As we contemplate the sheer magnitude of this natural disaster, it's essential to consider its broader implications. The intensity and frequency of such storms are increasing, raising questions about climate change and its impact on our world. However, in this episode, we are particularly interested in exploring whether these events carry a deeper, spiritual significance. Could the floods that have ravaged Paris be seen as a manifestation of divine wrath, as foretold in biblical prophecies? To understand this perspective, we must first appreciate the historical and cultural importance of Paris, which we will explore later. The role of climate change in such extreme weather events cannot be overlooked. While no single storm can be directly attributed to climate change, the increasing frequency and severity of these events align with the predictions of climate scientists. Warmer global temperatures lead to more evaporation and higher levels of atmospheric moisture, which can fuel more intense storms. Additionally, changes in atmospheric circulation patterns can alter the behavior of weather systems, potentially increasing the likelihood of events like the one experienced in Paris. The implications of these meteorological phenomena extend beyond the immediate disaster. As the climate continues to warm, cities around the world, including Paris, must prepare for more frequent and severe weather events. This preparation includes investing in resilient infrastructure, improving emergency response systems, and adopting sustainable practices to mitigate further climate change. However, while the scientific analysis provides a rational explanation for the storm, it does not preclude the possibility of a deeper, spiritual significance. Natural disasters have often been interpreted through a spiritual lens, seen as manifestations of divine will or warnings to humanity. The intersection of science and spirituality offers a rich field for exploration, allowing us to appreciate the complexity of these events and their potential meanings. As we delve deeper into the potential spiritual implications of the Paris storm, it is essential to keep in mind the scientific realities that frame our understanding of such events. The storm was a powerful reminder of the forces of nature and our vulnerability in the face of them. Yet it also invites us to reflect on the broader questions of existence, purpose, and the possibility of divine intervention. Throughout history, natural disasters have often been interpreted as acts of God, serving as warnings or judgments upon humanity. The Bible is replete with stories and prophecies where natural phenomena are depicted as instruments of divine will. 
to understand whether the recent catastrophic floods in Paris could be seen as a sign from God, we need to delve into the biblical perspective on natural disasters. One of the most famous accounts of a divine flood is the story of Noah's Ark. According to the book of Genesis, humanity had become exceedingly wicked, prompting God to cleanse the earth with a great flood. Noah, deemed righteous in his generation, was instructed to build an ark to save himself, his family, and pairs of every animal species. The floodwaters rose for forty days and nights, covering even the highest mountains and destroying all life that was not aboard the ark. Genesis 7, 17-24 This event is often cited as a prime example of divine judgment through natural disaster. The Bible contains numerous other references to natural disasters as expressions of God's wrath or as signs of the end times. For instance, the plagues of Egypt, described in the book of Exodus, included several natural calamities such as hailstorms and darkness, Exodus 9, 18, 26, Exodus 10, 21, 23. These plagues were direct acts of God aimed at compelling Pharaoh to release the Israelites from slavery. The parting of the Red Sea, another miraculous event, further illustrates how God used natural forces to deliver his people and execute judgment on their enemies, Exodus 14, 21, 31. The prophetic books of the Bible also speak extensively about natural disasters as harbingers of divine intervention. In the book of Isaiah, the prophet describes how the earth will be shaken and cities laid waste in the day of the Lord's wrath, Isaiah 13, 13. Similarly, the book of Jeremiah contains vivid imagery of storms and desolation as manifestations of God's anger against the wicked, Jeremiah 23, 19-20. These passages suggest a direct correlation between human sinfulness and divine retribution through natural events. In the New Testament, Jesus himself spoke of natural disasters as signs of the end times. In the Olivet Discourse, he warned his disciples that there would be famines, earthquakes and other calamities as the end of the age approached, Matthew 24, 7, 8. These events, he explained, were merely the beginning of birth pains, indicating the imminent arrival of God's kingdom. The Book of Revelation, the final book of the Bible, is filled with apocalyptic visions of natural disasters from earthquakes to fiery hail, symbolizing the ultimate judgment and renewal of the world. Revelation 8, 7 to 12. Revelation 16, 18 to 21. Given this extensive biblical backdrop, the recent floods in Paris can be viewed through a spiritual lens as potential signs of divine displeasure or warnings of greater tribulations to come. The unprecedented nature of the storm, coupled with the historical and cultural significance of Paris, lends weight to the interpretation that these events could carry a deeper, spiritual meaning. However, it is crucial to approach such interpretations with caution. The Bible also teaches that natural disasters can occur as part of the world's natural order, without specific divine intent. In the book of Job, for example, Job's sufferings, which included natural calamities, were a test of his faith, rather than a direct punishment for sin. Job 1, 18, 19, Job 2, 7, 10. Jesus himself addressed this in the Gospel of Luke, where he explained that tragedies like the collapse of the Tower of Siloam were not necessarily indicative of divine judgment, but rather reminders of the fragility of life and the need for repentance, Luke 13, 4, 5. Thus, while the floods in Paris could be seen as a manifestation of divine wrath, they could also be part of the natural cycles of the earth. This dual perspective invites a balanced reflection, encouraging both spiritual introspection and practical action. From a spiritual standpoint, events like these remind us of the importance of aligning our lives with divine principles and seeking a deeper understanding of God's will. They serve as calls to repentance, urging us to turn away from wickedness and embrace righteousness. On a practical level, they highlight the necessity of preparing for natural disasters through better infrastructure, emergency planning, and environmental stewardship. Next, we will explore specific Bible verses that speak of God's wrath and how they might apply to the recent events in Paris. By examining these scriptures, we aim to discern whether there is a prophetic significance to the floods and what lessons we can draw from them in our contemporary context. To understand whether the recent floods in Paris might be seen as a manifestation of divine wrath, it is essential to delve into biblical evidence regarding God's anger and its expressions through natural disasters. 
The Bible contains numerous references to the wrath of God, often depicted through powerful and terrifying natural events. By examining these scriptures, we can gain insight into how such phenomena have been historically interpreted and their potential relevance today. One of the most direct expressions of God's wrath is found in the Old Testament. In the book of Isaiah, the prophet vividly describes the impact of divine anger on the world. Therefore I will make the heavens tremble, and the earth will be shaken from its place at the wrath of the Lord of hosts in the day of his burning anger. Isaiah 13.13 13. This verse underscores the belief that God's wrath can cause cataclysmic changes in the natural order, shaking the very foundations of the earth. Jeremiah, another major prophet, also speaks extensively about the wrath of God. He uses the imagery of a storm to depict divine anger. Behold the storm of the Lord. Wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest. It will burst upon the head of the wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents of his heart. In the latter days you will understand this. Jeremiah 30, 23, 24. This passage suggests that God's wrath, manifested as a storm, is purposeful and will continue until his divine will is fulfilled. The book of Nahum provides another powerful depiction of divine wrath through natural disasters. Who can stand before his indignation? Who can endure the heat of his anger? His wrath is poured out like fire, and the rocks are broken asunder by him. Nahum 1.6 here, the intensity of God's anger is likened to a consuming fire, capable of breaking even the strongest rocks. Such imagery conveys the overwhelming power and unstoppable nature of divine judgment. Zephaniah, a lesser-known prophet, also warns of the universal scope of God's wrath. Therefore wait for me, declares the Lord, for the day when I rise up as a witness. Indeed, my decision is to gather nations, to assemble kingdoms, to pour out on them. My indignation, all my burning anger, for all the earth will be devoured by the fire of my zeal. Zephaniah 3 8. This verse emphasizes the global impact of divine judgment, affecting all nations and kingdoms. In the New Testament, the Apostle Paul reiterates the concept of divine wrath, but also emphasizes the moral reasons behind it. In his letter to the Romans, he writes, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Romans 1.18 Paul's explanation links God's wrath directly to human sinfulness and moral failings, suggesting that divine anger is a response to the rejection of truth and righteousness. The book of Revelation, with its apocalyptic visions, provides some of the most dramatic depictions of divine wrath in the Bible. John describes various judgments, including earthquakes, hailstorms, and plagues, as expressions of God's anger towards a sinful world. For instance, Revelation 16, I 1, 2 states, Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out on the earth the seven bowls of the wrath of God. So the first angel went and poured out his bowl on the earth, and harmful and painful sores came upon the people who bore the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. This imagery aligns natural disasters with divine retribution and highlights the severity of God's judgment in the end times. Throughout the Bible, the theme of divine wrath serves as both a warning and a call to repentance. The consistent message is that God's anger is a response to human sinfulness and disobedience. Natural disasters, when viewed through this lens, can be seen as manifestations of divine displeasure and reminders of the need for humanity to return to righteous living. Applying this biblical framework to the recent floods in Paris, we can consider whether these events align with the signs of divine wrath described in Scripture. The unprecedented nature of the storm, the extent of the destruction, and the significant cultural and historical context of Paris all contribute to the perception that these floods could be more than mere natural occurrences. They may be interpreted as a wake-up call for humanity, urging us to reflect on our actions and their alignment with divine principles. However, it is also essential to approach such interpretations with humility and discernment. The Bible cautions against presuming to know the full intentions of God. As Jesus explained in the Gospel of Luke, not all tragedies are direct punishments for specific sins, but they do serve as reminders of the impermanence of life and the urgency of repentance. Luke 13:1:15. In conclusion, 
the biblical evidence of God's wrath expressed through natural disasters provides a compelling framework for interpreting the recent floods in Paris. These events can be seen as potential signs of divine displeasure, prompting us to examine our lives and align them more closely with God's will. Whether viewed as a literal manifestation of divine wrath or a symbolic reminder of our vulnerability and need for spiritual reflection, the floods challenge us to consider the broader implications of our actions and their alignment with divine principles. As moving forward, we will explore the prophetic warnings found in the Bible and their relevance to contemporary events. By examining these prophecies, we aim to understand better the potential significance of the Paris floods in the context of biblical end times predictions. The Bible contains numerous prophetic warnings about the end times, many of which describe natural disasters and societal upheavals as precursors to divine intervention. These prophecies offer insights into how contemporary events, such as the floods in Paris, might be interpreted within a biblical framework. By examining these prophetic warnings, we can explore whether the recent storms align with the signs foretold in Scripture, and what implications they may hold for us today. One of the most prominent prophetic books in the Bible is the Book of Daniel. Daniel's visions include a series of symbolic images and events that many believe point to the end times. In Daniel 12.1, he writes, At that time Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress, such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. This passage suggests that unprecedented tribulations will precede the ultimate deliverance of the faithful, hinting at a period of significant natural and societal turmoil. The Book of Revelation, written by the Apostle John, is another critical source of end times prophecy. Revelation 6, 12-14 describes a series of catastrophic events. I watched as he opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth made of goat hair. The whole moon turned blood red. And the stars in the sky fell to earth, as figs drop from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. The heavens receded like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. These vivid descriptions of natural disasters align closely with the types of events that might be interpreted as divine warnings. Jesus himself spoke of the signs of the end times in his Olivet Discourse, recorded in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. In Matthew 24, 7-8, he warns, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. This passage highlights the increasing frequency and severity of natural disasters as indicators of the approaching end times, suggesting that such events are significant markers in the prophetic timeline. The Apostle Paul also addresses the end times in his letters to the early Christian communities. In 2 Timothy 3 1 5 he writes, But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. Paul's description of moral decay complements the physical signs of the end times, painting a comprehensive picture of the conditions that will precede divine intervention. These prophetic warnings provide a framework for interpreting contemporary events like the Paris floods. The unprecedented nature of the storm, its destructive power, and the cultural significance of Paris all align with the types of signs described in biblical prophecy. The floods can be seen as part of a broader pattern of natural and moral disturbances that signal the approaching end times. However, it is essential to approach these interpretations with a balanced perspective. While the Bible provides a rich tapestry of prophetic warnings, it also emphasizes the importance of discernment and readiness. Jesus cautioned his followers not to be overly fixated on specific signs, but rather to live in a state of continual preparedness and faithfulness, Matthew 24, 44. The Apostle Peter echoes this sentiment 
urging believers to live holy and godly lives as they anticipate the day of the Lord, 2 Peter 3, 11-12. In light of these teachings, the recent floods in Paris can serve as a powerful reminder of the need for spiritual vigilance and moral integrity. Whether or not these events are direct fulfillments of biblical prophecy, they underscore the fragility of human existence and the importance of aligning our lives with divine principles. The storms challenge us to reflect on our relationship with God, our stewardship of the earth, and our responsibility to one another. As we consider the prophetic warnings and their relevance today, it becomes clear that the key message is one of readiness and repentance. The Bible's prophecies are not intended to provoke fear, but rather to inspire hope and a deeper commitment to living in accordance with God's will. By interpreting contemporary events through this lens, we can draw valuable lessons for our spiritual journey and find strength in the promise of divine deliverance. As we move on, we will explore humanity's role and responsibility in the context of natural disasters. By reflecting on our actions and their consequences, we can gain a deeper understanding of how to respond to these challenges and align our lives with the teachings of the Bible. As we explore the potential spiritual significance of the recent floods in Paris, it is crucial to consider humanity's role and responsibility in the context of natural disasters. While these events can be interpreted through a biblical lens as signs of divine wrath or warnings, they also prompt us to reflect on our actions and their impact on the world. The Bible teaches that humans are stewards of the earth, tasked with caring for creation and living in accordance with divine principles. The concept of stewardship is rooted in the biblical account of creation. In the book of Genesis, God commands Adam and Eve to fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Genesis 1.28 This directive implies a responsibility to manage the earth's resources wisely and sustainably. However, human actions have often fallen short of this mandate leading to environmental degradation and increased vulnerability to natural disasters. Climate change is a significant factor in the increasing frequency and intensity of extreme weather events. The burning of fossil fuels, deforestation, and other human activities have contributed to global warming, altering weather patterns, and exacerbating natural disasters. While not every disaster can be directly attributed to climate change, the broader trend highlights the need for responsible stewardship of the environment. The Bible also emphasizes the moral and ethical dimensions of our actions. In the book of Proverbs, we are reminded that the righteous care for the needs of their animals, but the kindest acts of the wicked are cruel. Proverbs 12.10 This verse underscores the importance of compassion and care for all of God's creation, extending beyond human relationships to the natural world. Our treatment of the environment reflects our values and our adherence to divine principles. Natural disasters can serve as catalysts for reflection and repentance. They remind us of the fragility of life and the interconnectedness of all creation. The prophet Jeremiah, speaking to the people of Israel, conveyed God's message. If at any time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down and destroyed, and if that nation I warned repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster I had planned. Jeremiah 18-7-8 this passage highlights the potential for divine mercy in response to genuine repentance and transformation. In light of the recent floods in Paris, we are called to examine our actions and their alignment with biblical teachings. This examination involves both personal reflection and collective action. On a personal level, we are encouraged to live in ways that honor God and reflect His love for creation. This might include reducing our environmental footprint, supporting sustainable practices, and advocating for policies that protect the earth. Collectively, we must work towards building resilient communities that can withstand the impacts of natural disasters. This involves investing in infrastructure, improving emergency preparedness, and fostering a culture of care and responsibility. The Apostle Paul, in his letter to the Galatians, reminds us to carry each other's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Galatians 6.2 this call to solidarity and mutual support is especially relevant in times of crisis. Ultimately, the floods in Paris challenge us to consider the broader implications of our actions and our role as stewards of the earth. 
by aligning our lives with biblical principles and taking responsible actions, we can respond to these events with faith and resilience. The lessons we draw from these experiences can inspire us to live more consciously and compassionately, honoring our responsibility to God, each other, and the world we inhabit. The floods in France, a natural phenomenon, also carry spiritual interpretations. Some see them as a call to awaken or heed divine warnings, while others view them as part of the natural order. These events prompt us to reflect on our spiritual lives and the role of faith in crises, encouraging us to turn to community and spiritual practices for support, solidarity, and resilience. Let's use this moment not just to reflect, but to nurture our spiritual lives, deepen our faith, and find strength in community.